Good morning. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Our Mass this morning is being offered for the Prosper and Stefanski families. Our second collection is for the Building Fund. Rest in peace to Francis Govavich, whose funeral will be this Wednesday at 10.30. There will be a meeting this Wednesday, April 21st, at 6.30 in the church to discuss possible breakfasts for the parish. New faces are always welcome. Following the fundraiser meeting on Wednesday the 21st, at 7.15, there will be a meeting for anyone who wishes to help plan liturgical services for the diocesan year of the Real Presence. If there is any leftover soup, the Knights of Columbus will be in the, in the basement, in the hall, after Mass. And attention everyone that comes to the 10.30 Mass. First Holy Communion will be celebrated on Sunday, May 2nd, at 10.30 Mass. Due to the need for social distancing and abiding by the 50% reduction in seating, one might consider attending one of the other Masses that weekend, and that is May 2nd. And those who are qualified, please remember to schedule your COVID-19 vaccine shot. We need to keep you in our pews. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you if we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our hymn is number 424. 424 at the Lamb's High Feast. Please rise and greet Father Bill.
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As soon as 
I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, Lord let your grace A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may, you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. His expectation of sin, and not for our sins, but only by the, for those who, of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. For those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps the word, the love of God is truly perfect in them. The word of the Lord. We know 
know that Boston was the center for anti-slavery activity before and during the Civil War. And also, it became the great financial district that financed so much of the American of the America of the Industrial Revolution. And so, every April 15th, we just celebrated a couple days ago, every April 15th, Bostonians celebrate the founding of their great city with Founders Day. It's a holiday for everybody in Massachusetts. An integral part of Founders Day is the running of the Boston Marathon. It's the oldest continuing running marathon and the second longest continuous running foot race in North America since 1897. I didn't even know marathons went back that far. We also know that our wonderful fathers alone participated in the Boston Marathon. And many of us have known family and friends who have also participated in the marathon. But it was during the Boston Marathon of April 15, 2013, that two Islamic terrorists planted two homemade pressure cooker bombs along the route, detonating in 14 seconds between each. They were meant to trap the people. One further down the street from the finish line, the other one closer to the finish line. We remember that horrific day. And even though these bombs were lethal, we might say, well, thank God only three people died. But we know that hundreds <coughs> Hundreds were injured, including 17 who lost their limbs, a number of them being double amputees. Young children were included in that. Three days later, the, the FBI through surveillance uh, footage of around the area, was able to identify these two suspects. And after their identification, these two terrorists began to go on the run. They killed a recently married MIT policeman at the college campus. He was sitting there in his patrol car, taking a break, drinking a cup of coffee, and they came up behind him and they, they shot him in the head. And then finally, outside of Boston in the town of Watertown, they were able to catch up with both of them. The elder <coughs> surrendered, but his younger brother led them on a, another gunfight which, once again, severely injured a number of police officers, and one of them who would later succumb to his wounds. Can you imagine witnessing such carnage, such a heinous, horrific act? To imagine that there are people, young kids, with no arms, no legs, all because of this radical indoctrination of these two men. Can we imagine not just witnessing all of this, but all the broken bodies? Bodies that would be broken forever. This past week, 
and Bible study, which we have every Thursday. One of our newest parishioners came from Boston. She came down here to care for an elderly aunt. I knew she came from Boston. I also knew that she was an emergency room nurse at one time at Boston Mass. But Elizabeth left us all very quiet at Bible study. You see, Elizabeth was off duty that day. And I guess just about everybody and his brother goes to the Boston Marathon. She was there with other nurses who were off duty with her. And there's a team of nurses every year that run the Boston Marathon. And so they were there to cheer their co-workers on. Her friend who she was closest with said, you know, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to go home. I'll talk to you later. And the woman crossed the street and the first bomb went off. And she was killed instantly. She watched her friend die. I purposely mentioned that the police officer at MIT was recently married. He had married a young nurse from Boston Mass. And Elizabeth once again was at that wedding. The man who she bought her gas from for her car every week was the older brother. She said he was the nicest man. Never in her life would she ever think that he would do something so heinous. She was a witness to all of this. comes and he appears in the room and he shows them his hands and his feet and his side. But you know, not in the way that people would do today. He doesn't come and say, you abandoned me, you betrayed me, your sins did this, look what you did to me. How many times do we hear that? People and their anger and their vindictiveness. You did this to me. Jesus doesn't say that. 
He says, peace be with you. Shalom. I love you. I care about you. And I come to show you that I am now in a glorified body. And I restore you to hope, to an everlasting life, So that your broken lives, your broken body, is whole in heaven. You know, very sadly, but less than 40% of us Catholic Christians, we believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist anymore. I blame some of that into our assimilation into culture. We live in a culture that doesn't believe in the real presence. And we want to be like everybody else. We are immersed into other religions that don't believe in the real presence. We are immersed in a culture today where there's God, but right now I have my lived life to live, and so, <clears throat> so be it. We don't go to church. In a few moments, I will stand behind that altar, that altar that represents the cross, and I'll take our gifts of bread and wine, and just as Jesus did at the Last Supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave God the Father thanks and grace. Handed the cup to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you. My life poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We do not make a connection between the Last Supper and Good Friday. We consider them two total different events. And you know, I'm sure the apostles that night were clueless to they knew they were gathered to celebrate the Passover, but they failed to see the connection. They failed to comprehend what Jesus was saying to them. They heard it, but it didn't touch their hearts. They failed to understand that Jesus was giving his life to them, that this broken body of his through the grace of God the Father, the mystery of the Paschal sacrifice would not only give him a glorified body, but on the day of our passing, would also give us, those who believe in his real presence, our glorified bodies too. It's a shame that we have lost touch with the meaning of the Eucharist in our life. So many of us use Protestant terminology. We call it a cracker, we call it a cookie. We come up to communion, clueless why we're doing it. Some of us come up with sin on our souls. Others are just like doing it like everybody else. 
Some of us just don't care. We have the Blessed Sacrament out on the altar for private prayer. Nobody comes. Nobody needs God anymore. We get some of the old timers saying, Father, when are we going to have 40 hours devotion like we did in the good old days? Who's going to sit with the Lord? We can't even get people to sit for four hours on a first Friday. And yet that's the reason why Jesus broke his body for us. That's the reason why he poured out his blood for us. To make things better. To make things whole. And so today is... We hear the disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. That we understand more clearly what the breaking of the bread means. That it's the actual breaking of Jesus' body. We realize that he brings us peace and not to trouble our hearts or to despair us. But also to forgive us our sins. By his wounds, we are healed. We cannot erase from history or even our memories the sight of horrific events. Other Boston Marathon bombings. Since the 1st of April, there have been 45 mass shootings in the United States. When will we learn to respect life, the life of others? It will happen. It will happen. When we recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, when will we no more need to have broken bodies for love the world? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from God, begotten by name, unsubstantial of the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was a part of the birth of Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we hear his words in the scriptures, our hearts burn within us with a longing for God's presence. With this Easter hope, let us express our needs in prayer. Let those who teach you, church, who will remain faithful to the gospel <clears throat> of repentance and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church, 
government and industry will work together to provide food, employment, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are dying may know the peace of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory, especially the Prosper and Stefanski uh, families. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to grant these prayers for your risen Son, the glorious Prince of Life, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Is number 695. Open my eyes. Hymn number 695.
May coldly therefore ye kiss me pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
please join with us, 803, Give to Find a Sweet.